welcome to the Hudson Valley Knits podcast. I am Amy. Uh, I am podcasting here from George's Island Park in the Hudson Valley of New York. And um, I am Memers on Ravelry and I am Memers66 on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy this little podcast of mine. I uh, am a little out of breath because I had to do a little climbing and stuff to get to this spot. The whole I'm at the park, and but everywhere I went today to podcast outside because it is really nice out. It was super super windy. Um, usually at this park, George's Island, I can just park in the parking lot and walk to a really beautiful spot and sit on a bench. But now I'm actually right on the shore. Let me see if I can get that. Can you see? I can't tell because of the glare, but I'm right on the shore. You can see the rocks down there. I'm sitting on a little on a boulder right on the shore, and I'm kind of enclosed. I'm in a little cove. You can't see on the other side. It's all very thick brush, so I had to kind of walk around it and walk on this rocky shore uh, to get to this spot so that there wouldn't be huge gusts of wind, which I know when I podcast, I've podcast in the past, it makes it hard to hear me. So you have to forgive me if I'm a little discombobulated because I am in a very rocky area and I have a nice boulder to sit on, but everything around me is precarious. I also have a latte. which is delicious. I got it at the Peace Hill Coffee House. The best, best lattes ever anywhere. Uh, and I put it in the thermos so it stays nice and hot. Okay. So let me see. I have, it's been a while. I think this is episode 96 or 97. Well, let me see. I wrote it down. 97. So three more episodes and I'm at episode 100. Um, maybe I'll do like a little giveaway for episode 100. It's also like a, a, I think I started podcasting in 2013. So this August, it will be five years of podcasting, which is kind of crazy. Went, went by so fast. I started out recording these podcasts before I even knew there were knitting podcasts. I was recording them and putting them on Facebook because hated to type. I was never a prolific writer slash or even typer. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like when in school when you had to write compositions or stories I, I wasn't good at expressing myself with pen and paper. Um, but I am kind of good with like technical uh, writing. Um, so when I would write my blogs for my knitting blog, which I did just because I loved sharing what I was doing. Um, and this is all the way back. I started blogging in 2008. You can go back and look if you want. Um, <clears throat> I, I just thought one day, God, I wish I could just record it and put it online and not have to type anything and I could just show my stuff and not have to take all these pictures. And so that's what I started doing. And then I noticed that there iTunes had a lot of knitting podcasts and I actually hired someone to help me figure out how to do that and create a nicer site and everything and uh, I think it paid off. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do something to celebrate that and to thank all of you that have kind of sti stuck with me all these years. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me because I put a lot of myself into it. Uh, anyway. Let's get back to, down to business. I have a lot to talk about and a lot to show you. And some I recorded in the past because I gave uh, some finished objects away as gifts. So um, I will insert those and then I will go. I have some whips. One is new, you haven't seen yet. The others you have. And I have one little stash enhancement to show you. Um, and I wanted to talk about um, one project that 
will be on the noodles, on the noodles, <laughs> on the needles soon. And if I didn't tell you, today is the uh, March 18th. It's the day after St. Patrick's Day. And maybe that's why, <laughs> I have to tell you, my, son, my husband's half Irish. And we went out with my mother-in-law yesterday, who's doing great, by the way. And um, <laughs> all day long, for saying, he kept singing, walking around singing, a doodly 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 do. And I, I got this going through my head. You know how stuff goes through your head and you can't get it out? Driving me nuts. All right, so let's get to some finished objects. I'll start first with um, this. This is Tin Can Knits Gramps cardigan, and I knit it with um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed. This is the marine colorway here, and this is actually Knit Picks, I believe it's called Knit Picks Elegance. It's baby alpaca, pure baby alpaca. I really don't remember the colorway. It's some deep, deep, deep stash I had leftovers of. And I like the way the colors match, but if you look close at the stitch definition, it doesn't, especially down here, it doesn't give you a nice crisp uh, ribbing, but I just, I looked through my stash to see if I had anything else that would go nice with this and, and to do the uh, ribbing in, and I couldn't find anything. I went down two needle size, trying to make it nice and tight and uniform, and it wasn't working. The pockets and the pattern, the pockets, they have you uh, knit the flap and sew it down. But what I do is I um, knit to the edge of the fabric as I go. So I attach it as I go. And I think it makes it nicer looking. Um, so that's that. All my ends are woven in, it's fully blocked. I even sewed on these cute little button. Well, they're not cute, they're, they, they make it look like a grandpa cardigan, that's what I think. This is a six to nine month size. I think it looks more like a 12 month size to me. Um, it came out rather big. I didn't really pay much attention to gauge though, being as it's for a child, a baby. My coworker is having a baby boy early April and this is for my coworker. And uh, I'll give it to him sometime next week. And uh, I'm really very happy with that. I love this pattern. It's a great pattern. I think it's the most adorable pattern you can make for a boy, the baby boy, especially a toddler sized boy. I think it looks cuter on the toddler sized boys, but even babies. And I suppose it could be um, for a girl too, if you really wanted to. Um, next on the fifth object, this is like, I've been dying to show you this. These are my root socks by Claire Mountain from the Socks 2018. What is it called? Let me see if I wrote it down. See, I have to put my sunglasses down so that I can read my show notes, their prescription. Um, roots. No, I didn't write down the. Uh, I think it's Makers or something like that is the, the magazine. Uh, these are made in 100% Targi. They're Spirit Trail Fiber Works, uh, but she no longer dyes this base, but it's in her Pink Sands colorway. These socks fit me absolutely perfect. I can't tell you how many times I re-knit, ripped it back and re-knit, especially the first sock. Um, the first sock, what I did was I was knitting it and um, I got past the heel and I tried it on and it was really pulled very taut over the top of my foot where the heel is. And I just decided that it really needed to be a little looser there. I could have gotten away with it, but I really just wanted it to fit perfectly because I love this pattern and I love this color. And I love this yarn. I love everything about these socks. So I ripped it back. And what I did is I just switched to the next, I switched from a size zero, um, 2.0 millimeters to a size US one, 2.25 millimeters, about an inch before I started the heel. I think about right, 
gosh, about right here. I'm not sure exactly where I did it. You could, I bet if you look close, you could see the stitches might be a little looser. And then I knit the whole heel and up an inch to about right here where I started the seed stitch. And then I switched back to the zeros. I also, and I think I talked about this on a previous podcast, I do, I do some short rows. Right after I finish the fish lips heel, when I'm doing toe up, I do some short rows here. And I'm gonna start, when I do a cuff down, and I have one in my queue, <coughs> I'm gonna do some short rows before I start the kiss lips, the fish lips kiss heel, um, just to, to get a little more space inside that heel cup. Because the fish lips kiss heel alone for me, it, it sits too low on my heel, and I, I, don't, I don't like it. So I want it to be up here a little more on my heel. So I like doing that. It's just a couple of short rows. Now, um, when I knit the second sock, I had to do some ripping back too because I made mistakes. I'm not sure how, but I ended up with two, two stitches fewer on the, on the um, bottom of the foot. So, and I was knitting much tighter. So, um, even though I, oh no, no, I forgot to switch to the US ones here for the heel. So I had to rip that out anyway. And then I realized I was two stitches short. So I actually added stitches. And I knit around and knit up to here. So this one got ripped out too, the second sock. But this is, this is everything was worth it. Every stitch was worth it. I love these. And uh, the pattern was great. Like It wasn't the pattern. It was me. And actually, the pattern isn't written for Fish Lips Kiss. It has a, I think a, it has a short row heel and it and a, a toe up heel flap. I, I don't like doing toe up uh, gusset socks. I don't like it at all. I never know when to start increasing and it's just, I just don't like it. So I'm very pleased with these. I like the fish lips kiss and I can't wait to do a, I made sure the next pair of socks in my queue were, were uh, top down because I, I just, I'm not a big fan of toe up. I, I like for the, the cup down socks. So. There they are. This fabric blocked out so nice and drapey and soft, yet they fit so good around my ankle. I love them. So that is the two finished objects I have with me. So I guess I'll pause now and I'll show you. I did some gift knitting for my sister-in-laws. Um, both of them requested a Brooklyn Tweed hat. Um, and I finished those and I blocked those. I had spoke to you about getting uh, gauge and all for the second hat. And I think I go into it in the videos that I recorded before I gave them their gifts, which was like at least a week ago, I think, or two weeks ago. It was when I went upstate for my father's birthday. So I'll stick those in here. I also, wanted to share with you some really um, weird stuff about gauge that is like, it's really bothering me. <laughs> but let me first get into why I, uh, the gift knitting and why I'm recording now. Uh, the last episode I showed you a replica of the uh, US, Team US uh, Olympic hat. It's a free pattern by Susan Rainey. And I told you I was knitting it for a coworker, which I was. And I finished it and I showed you and I brought it in and he tried it on and he put it on his head. And he's like, this is great, Amy, thanks. And I'm like, do you like the way it fits? Um, I would say he has a normal size head and I kept trying it on my head as I went along and it felt fine. Um, I know he, didn't want anything slouchy, but um, due to the nature of the pattern and you really kind of have to do all the repeats, it was pretty slouchy. Um, but he kind of said, I said, look, if, if you want it a little tighter, I'm going to knit and I can give that one to my husband and... I can give, well, this one to my husband and I'll knit another one smaller for you. 
And I said, what I'll do, he says, well, what size is this? And I said, it's, there are no sizes um, because of the pattern. You know, just what I would do is go down a needle size, which would make a tighter fabric and a smaller hat. And he said, well, I would like a smaller hat. And he said, honestly, I think if I were skiing in this hat, it would fly off my head. <coughs> so I have here the hat, the first hat. This is the hat I've already showed you. It now belongs to my husband who has a huge head. I think his head is 23 inches around. Most average heads, my head is 20. And I would guess that my coworker's head is probably the same, like around 20. Um, so here's Mark's hat. I knit this in size um, five for the brim, the, right, which has a, a, it's called a tubular cast on, and then um, six for the straight stockinette, and size seven for the uh, stranded color work section. This is all in Cascade 220, regular, not superwash, regular. I'm trying to stay away from buying super washing lines, just so you know, because of all the chemicals used to make them, and I don't want it polluting our earth. So I'm not, I have super wash in my stash, and I will use it, but I'm trying not to buy super wash. The only exception I would buy super wash for is if I were knitting for a, ch a baby or a child, because you need to be able to wash those. Anyway. Um, so what I was getting at is, uh, it is Cascade 220. I bought one skein of each, or I should say my coworker bought the yarn. He bought the yarn for it. Um, I bought one skein each of the red and white. And after two hats, this is what's left. Um, I haven't weighed it, but I would say it's easily a little more than half the skein. I use more white than red. Um. For the blue, this is what was left after the first hat, and it's a beautiful navy blue, and this is what was left after the second hat I knit, smaller, tighter, and therefore smaller, but I obviously use less yarn. I am going to use this yarn to make uh, LJ, my co-worker, a nice pom-pom. Let me show you the hat. So here is the second hat, still soaking wet from being blocked. Um, I did not block the the uh, ribbing. I left that out of the water. It's, it got a little wet, but I didn't want it to relax too much. I want it to be nice and elastic. Um, oh, I'm showing you the back, right? I really, really, I think it came out better than the first one. And for comparison, here's the, actually, they look about the same, but this is wet, so it's it's really kind of hard to tell. It's definitely not as wide as Mark's. <laughs> so, disclaimer, Mark has worn this a lot, and it's stretched out, okay? Because Mark has a big head, and I'm going to show you. It's just really big and stretched out. This is soaking wet, but it's definitely narrower. Um, it's, again, it's plumped up and, and soaking wet, so I can't really measure it, but I will take measurements before I, once it's completely dry, just to compare. But I think my color work section came out much nicer. I, um, held the contrasting colors in my left hand. I held, I, with the red as a third color. I just uh, dropped it and picked it up when I needed to use it, and I um, made sure I wrapped it because usually I don't wrap, but in this case I did because there just was a lot of sp uh, space between using it. So like I would wrap it right here in the middle of the X and so on and so forth. And then if um, for these sections here, I wrapped it like right above the diamond. So that's the hat for my coworker. Definitely smaller. It should be much tighter. I really like it much better at this gauge. So back on the radi radiator it goes um, to dry. 
when I put stuff on my radiator, it dries so fast. I love it. All right, so this is Mark's hat. So he's back in the bed. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so I think that's the last Olympic hat I'm going to knit. I'm going to keep the print out, though, just in case. I think I'm probably, after the pom-pom, I won't have enough. Yarn for another one, I'd have to buy another navy blue skin, but I probably have enough red and white <coughs> for three more hats easily. Uh, anybody wants to make one and you you could buy the navy and uh, maybe we can make a deal. Anyway, I will make the pom-pom red, white, and blue. And I'll see if Mark wants one too. So that's it with the Olympic hat. Next, I, I'll show you a hat that I knit my sister-in-law, Laura, Mark's sister. She lives in upstate New York, and I wanted to knit her and her spouse something uh, special for helping Mark out with his teaching materials for his cooking class that he's putting together. It needs to be a state um, certified class. Um, so she helped him with that, um, some of those uh, requirements um, because she is, she has a PhD in teaching. So she's really good at this stuff. But as a thank you, I wanted to knit, knit them each something, they um, a hat or something. And I sent them a link to uh, Brooklyn Tweed. To, I gave them a choice of some hat patterns that I had in my library. And I gave them a link to the Brooklyn Tweed site and told them to pick out yarn colors. And they just went ahead and picked out totally different patterns. So it doesn't matter. I bought the new patterns. But here is the one my sister-in-law, um, Laura, picked out. It is not handy. I have to look on Ravelry, if you'll just excuse me one second. I'm looking it up. I know I'm not looking at you. It's um a Jared Flood. My notebook. It is Isthmus. I-S-T-H-M-U-S. And it is by Gudrun Johnston. I like it a lot. It's with the... um um. What you call it's with her not shelter quarry. Here it is. Excuse me. Here's what's left. Um, so it's with quarry, and uh, quarry is a beautiful. It's it, the color is co uh, cold slate, and it's a beautiful gray blue, and that kind of gets it. I have it facing the window, so you can see the light reflect off it. It's a slate gray and it's got beautiful blue undertones she picked out this color and uh, she wanted the beanie style and I just think it came out great um, I had to fuss around to get gauge but that was fine and I still have about a little less than half a skein left I'd have to weigh it to be sure maybe I can no, probably not enough for a little fingerless mitts. I'm really not sure if I could even do another hat. Although, this, I, I bet if I did a little smaller hat, a tight, a snugger hat, I might be able to get one more hat out of it. Quarry. So that is this one. Now her wife, my sister-in-law Becky, she picked out the low low pattern. I think this one is by um, Jared Flood. And it's an um, interesting construction. Yeah, so it's Lolo. It's by Jared. Again, a beanie style hat. I'm seeing a pattern. I think my sister in laws like these beanie style hats. <coughs> I'm going to show you the schematic. And this is something he always shows in his lookbooks. It's knit flat, and he uses short rows um, on this side here. These kind of come together. They're dotted because they don't really lay flat like that, but they kind of scrunch together to form the crown. 
and um, my problem is it's knit flat and it's knit and then it kind of goes around you sideways so um, very important to swatch and very important especially for row gauge if your stitch gauge is slightly off you'll just have like a deeper or a shorter hat but if your row gauge is off your hat won't fit you right so Becky's head is 22 inches so I'm trying to get gauge for the large now they he does not in the pattern and um, adjust stitch count for the sizes he tells you to change your needle size to get gauge so for the large I need 18 stitches for four inches and 36 rows okay here's where it gets really really strange I uh, originally because my row gauge my row gauge tends to be loose and my stitch gauge tends to be average maybe kind of on the slightly tight side um, I went down a needle size from the suggested US 7s actually yeah US 7 for the size large or actually US 8 which is probably what I'm going to end up making it in but I'm going to have to do another swatch because here's what she pitched bought two skeins just in case you needed the yard uh, I bought two skeins just in case you needed the yard I bought two skeins just in case you needed the large because it suggested two skeins for the large it's the color she picked is fauna and it's it's green like an olive green with gold aqua and like reddish brown speckles and I think I'm gonna have to hold that's kind of it to me it's kind of blah but she liked it and that's all that matters kind of looks like muddy moss all right so this is my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is my US seven. Both swatches done on signature needles, and I put little knots in the tail for so I know which size needle I use. This is the six. This is the live end up here. I don't bind off when I do swatches, I leave the stitches live. Do you notice something? They are almost exactly the same size. The size seven is like two millimeters longer, but they are exactly the same width. Very, very strange. I even, <laughs> I even checked my needles in a needle gauge to make sure that my signature needles weren't the same size. <coughs> there is practically no difference between these two swatches. The yarn is a bit elastic here. Um, and, but I just like, I can't, it's very, um, the yarn is very, like if I stretch it this way, it kind of holds that extra wide shape. But then if I go ahead and then stretch it this way, it kind of holds that narrow shape and gets longer. It does have some spring back, but it's easily contorted. I'm finding this yarn. Um, I wound one skein and this is all I have left of it just from swatching. If I make another swatch, I am going to be down to one skein. And I hate to use yarn that I've swatched with because it just doesn't look the same. But I'm going to have to because I have to swatch again. And I'm going to swatch again with the size 8. And this time I am um, going to add or 
add rows if necessary to get the circumference I need, which would be a 20 inch for Becky's head because she, <coughs> sorry, she has a 22 um, inch diameter head. Um, the other thing that is an extreme problem for me is for the size large, the gauge required is 18 stitches and 36 rows. With the size 7, I get 17 and a half stitches and 42 rows. Way off. Way off. So, I don't know. It's just, um, with the 42 rows... I'm guessing I will get um, seventeen inch diameter hat. So I definitely have to adjust this. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Let's go find my notes. I have notes. Um, for the medium, I would need ten more rows and eight stitches less. And for the large, <laughs> I would need to fit in almost um, at this gauge with that needle. 17 more rows to get the size I need. Anyway, I'm going to go up a size and I'll figure it out. But I just thought it was really strange with this shelter that the changing the needle size had literally almost no effect on the size of my swatch. I don't know if it's because it's garter. Um, the swatch was um, required to be in garter stitch. <clears throat> um, because the hat is garter with slip stitches or what. But yeah, I'm going to do another swatch. And um, there are some places I was looking at the charts. And there are a couple of spots where I can reduce stitches or increase stitches and um, add rows. So I will do that as necessary. <coughs> so that's my gift knitting. <clears throat> I have a feeling I'll be able to show you this uh, Lolo hat before um, for the next podcast. I'm not going to see them again until I go upstate for my father's birthday party, which will probably be mid-March. Um, <clears throat> what else did I want to show you? Um, knitting Guild, we had a guest, a yarn shop come and talk about Fair Isle Knitting, and I got some stash. It is nose stuck in a book. It is Once Upon a Corgi Yarn. It is 85% BFL and 15% NEPS, which is your tweed. It's a fingering weight. 538 yards. I love this pink color. It's a little lighter than, well, that's about it. Really love it. Um, we'll go into a shawl. I don't know. really want to make socks with it. It's BFL, so it should be a good sturdy sock yarn. But it has no nylon in it, and I'm afraid it might wear out quickly. <clears throat> How many plies is it? Doesn't say how many plies. Uh, I'm torn. I don't know if the tweed will look nice in a shawl, but it would look beautiful in socks. Maybe um, I could just do the heels in a nice nylon yarn, sturdy nylon yarn. That's what I'll do. I really want to make socks with this <clears throat> from that 2018 sock book. So many beautiful patterns. So I got that. And um, that's all I'll talk about for now. I have, so enough babbling. I wanted to sh uh, record uh, another quick clip. I finished the Lolo hat. Sorry about the lighting, but it is dark outside. Let me see if it adjusts. Well, it looks better out here. This is the one where I had the problem with gauge. I did manage to get gauge. I went... I actually stayed with the seven when my gauge swatch completely dried and I let it hang out for a little while it did plump up and um, 
I have some pictures I'll plug in of the two different gauge swatches. Of the two different gauge swatches. Um, it fits me perfectly. It might be a little tight on my sister-in-law if her head is 22 inches. Um, it was a, a nice design. I like it. It's definitely unique and unusual. Um, I don't know if I would knit it for myself. I like a little more loose fit. Um, and it was really weird. I kind of, each of these is a panel. And they, um, are joined by short rows. But then he makes you pick up at the top some stitches and knit like two rows and then pull it in and, and it kind of looks a little weird but that being said let me um show you what it looks like on this is where you do a three needle bind off and sew it together um let me just take this out show you what it looks like on me so a nice beanie style hat um with uh, extra fabric to cover the ears uh, the shelter feels wonderful. Um, it did loosen up too when I blocked it. You really do have to block hats. <laughs> um, I think this is going to be fine and I think they're going to love it. And I'm going upstate this weekend. It's my father's birthday party weekend. Oh, excuse me. And um, they live like 40 minutes away from my parents. So I'll pop up and hang out with them for a little while and bring them. Their hats. So here are my sister-in-law present hats. Brooklyn Tweed Quarry, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, both. This is Gudrun Johnson. This is a, a Jared Flood pattern. Both beautiful. And I hope my sister-in-laws are happy. So uh, I'll see you in another few days with more um, pattern progress. I'll try and maybe record another segment piece of this episode on. Uh, Maybe this weekend. I don't know. I'll be kind of busy. Um, another thing I want to talk about real quick before I go is, um, well, you know what? I'll put that in a separate segment. Bye for now. Okay. So now, what should I talk about now? Those are the finished objects for whips. Okay. I have a new item, a new pair of socks on the needles. They are in a Jan Smiley bag, one of her box bags that she made with tweed and plaid. And I think I picked this subconsciously because I wish I was in Edinburgh, <laughs> Edinburgh this weekend, but I'm not. So these socks are the Fragment Socks by Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade, and they were they are in the Lane Mag Lane Magazine 4, and I don't know how to say that. Is it Lane or Lyene, or how do they pronounce that? I, I've heard it many different ways, but in to me it looks like Lane. So I'll just put it that way, but um, it's a great pattern. I really love it. So these socks are for my boss. Um, I don't know if you remember I, a while back I knit some socks for a coworker and my boss got all jealous. <laughs> he sits right across from the guy who got me the buttons that are on the Tin Can Knits cardigan. I couldn't find them anywhere and he found them and he bought them and I knit on a pair of socks to thank him. So these um, are for my manager who is really one of the most awesome managers I've ever had, um, Orville is his name and um he and the other guy i knit the socks for i hope you can see that this is a really cute pattern and i thought it'd be good for a man and it'll make his socks a little more interesting but uh so every almost every day at work him and this other guy is rich they sit across from each other and i can see i have a i'm kind of like diagonally from them so i they're across the hall from me and I see them every day pulling up their slacks and showing each other what kind of cool socks they're wearing that day. So they, they both enjoy buying unusual socks and wearing them with, you know, crazy designs and stuff. So 
I wanted to make something that wasn't just a plain vanilla knit sock for my manager, and this was a great choice. He picked out the yarn, which is um, Into the World um, Pococo Sock, hand painted Pococo Sock, called Second Spring is the Colorway. I think I got this at a Stitches, um, or I might have gotten it at Rhinebeck, I really don't remember. Uh, so I brought a bunch of different yarns to work that I thought he might like, and this is the one he picked. And we even looked on Ravelry together to see if any of the yarns had any uh, projects knit up. I don't know if you could do, you knew that you can do this, but you can like go to your yarn and sele select that specific color. And then on the top in the menu, it's, it gives you a select, uh, you can select project and it will show you any projects knit with that. Um, color so you can see what it's gonna look like knit up and so he got to see this one knit up and he liked it a lot and I chose this and I had knit about this far and had to rip it out because I knit it in a US one and a half and then I brought it to work and I told him to try it on to make sure he could get it over his heel and it actually was too loose so now I'm down to a US 1, which is a 2.25 millimeter, and I'm knitting it on that instead. And I'm actually thinking maybe I'll just not knit any more on this this weekend and bring them in again tomorrow and have them check, uh, try them on again just to make sure they're just right. Yeah, I noticed when he tried them on he had skinny little ankles, so that could be why. <laughs> And yes, I know it's weird watching your boss try socks on in his cube at work. Um, like I said, he's a great manager. He's one of the best managers I've ever had. He really knows what true leadership is all about. So I'm very happy to knit this for him. And I also, you know, we, our whole department is going through a huge reorganization. Um, I'm probably not, shouldn't be talking about it in too much detail, but my, my, I do know for a fact that um, I'll find out in April if I have a job. I might not have a job, but uh, my boss already found out that he does have a job. He will remain in, in our Stanford office, but I will no longer be working for him as of May if I do have a job, which makes me sad because he's, like I said, he's, we, he's a great guy. So very happy to be making these socks for him. I also brought the Humulus sweater that I'm making. And I'm trying, I had to be very careful. I hope you can have patience with me because I'm in a very rocky area and I don't, and it's also kind of, the tide is low, but I'm actually sitting in an area that's full of, uh, um, that the tide usually covers. So it's kind of dirty around here and I don't want my stuff to get dirty. So I'm trying to be careful. So I apologize if uh, I'm, I seem a little disorganized. It's because I have everything in a bag and I want to keep it in there. All right, so this is the Humulus. This is a pullover top-down sweater. It is part of the March Mayhem, which is the um, um, Mason Dixon, Dixon knitters do that every year and you vote and, and keep voting it for your favorite patterns. This is one of them and I did vote for it. Here's the one picture I have of it because I usually don't print them all up. But it's by um, Isabel Kramer, one of my favorite designers for top-down sweaters. She is unbeatable. I just tried it on this morning and I think I'm gonna knit at least one more inch before I start the ribbing. And then I should be able to start the sleeve. So here it is. Um, can you see it? I don't know, it's right in front of my face. I'll just hold it here for now. I'm getting a lot of glare, so I can't tell how good your, your view is. But here's the yoke. Here's the bottom. Like I said, I'm going to knit another inch at least. And just so you know, I did put a progress keeper in. And that's how much I've knit since I last showed it to you. Not as much because as I would have liked because I was doing all that gift knitting, the hats and, and, and whatnot, and the baby sweater. This is all for me. This is gonna maybe even be a Rhinebeck sweater. Um, this is a fantastic pattern. 
and it's so easy because it's top down and you can play around with the colors you can even you can even do multiple colors this is a by the way I didn't mention it's Knit Picks Simply Wool that's their natural undyed wools which I, I really like and this is Knit Picks it's that marine tweed the same one I knit the uh, uh, baby sweater with it I ordered I think I ordered three of them but I, it only took one to do the yoke and it only took two to do the sweater so it worked out perfect so this is um, very likely to be a finished object next time you see it because this will be getting most of my attention um, because I'm really excited to cast on another sweater I have accumulated sweaters uh, quantity of stash lately um, I don't always I don't usually show my stash always on unless it's really I, I've gone to a special event or whatnot um, because I don't know it's more about the knitting for me um, so but I did buy a lot of uh, sweater stashes with Christmas money and then I even splurged myself and bought um, some yarn for a couple of sweaters with some old wool which I'm about to show you right now because those that ends my whips right okay. yeah. show the socks oh yeah that's it so and I will be pulling pulling out just I haven't worked on it kind of put it on hold for a while but I will start working on the rose gold sweat uh, shawl for my sister I've been working on that before Christmas well, before all the gift knitting. And, it, and it's been on the back burner, but I will be working on that again. Um, and that's, you know, an easy pace uh, project because uh, it's gonna be a Christmas present, so I have more than enough time to finish that. Next, and I'm trying not to talk fast. I hope, I, I keep reminding myself to slow down. There's no rush, relax easy where is it okay nope that's not it oh here it is so i said i bought some sweaters worth of yarn for um a sweater and i guess just to backtrack a little the march mayhem which is the mason dixon knitty thing if you haven't heard of it you should go to the website um they they have four categories and one of them was yokes and um, one of the sweaters that they showed there I fell in love with and I I didn't want to buy another sweaters worth but I realized I had some beautiful yarn that I purchased at Rhinebeck from Old Wool that would be perfect for the yoke colors and I had some neutrals in old wool and I decided on a neutral for the body of the sweater. So I really only had to order four skeins. Um, here is my swatch. And this is for this pattern here. It is the Ragna pattern, uh, sweater by Trin and Nelly. And I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Let me see if you could read it. But here's the yoke part of it. Now, this is going to be really interesting. Um, I want a cardigan, and um, I don't want it to be a pullover. I have a lot of pullovers, but I really would like to have a cardigan that I can take on and off at work and whatnot. Let me show you again the yoke part. This is all old wool natural superwash sport. Keyword superwash. So. Because I want a cardigan, I have two options. I can either steek it and knit it in the round and steek it, or I can knit it back and forth and not steek it, but then I have to do my color work on the pearl side. Um, pros and cons. So the big con for the steek is that it's super wash and I'm really not sure if it will hold the steek. And I'm not sure if I'm willing to risk it. The pro for that is it will go faster if I knit in the round. And um, for the knit side to side, the pro is I really enjoy purling. I don't mind it. 
and um, then I won't have to worry about a stick. I'll just pick up for a button band um, and all that. So the con is I'd have to pearl my color work, which while I can do that no problem, this swatch was made flat, so I pearled my color work because that's how I plan to make it. I purposely did the swatch that way, and you can see it's not, it didn't come out bad. I can make it look perfectly nice and even with the pearls. It's not that difficult. The only part for me that's a little difficult, and not really difficult, but slower, is um, pearling with my right hand. I, I, I don't pearl well. <laughs> it's a little awkward for me, pearling with my right hand. Pearling with my left hand, I'm super quick. I love it. It's mindless for me. A lot of people don't like it, but I personally have no problems with it. Um, so I will, I will be knitting it flat. And then my gauge wasn't right. So I, I got the gauge with a, a larger needle. This is my second swatch. And the, the first swatch I got I kind of got stitch gauge. My row gauge was off, which is also important, but I didn't like the fabric. It was too loose and it was like, you could like, if it's stretched out, you could see holes and I didn't like it at all. So I went down a needle size, which made my gauge even worse. <laughs> um, however, I like the fabric a lot and I also, so this is knit in a five. I went up to a six in the color work to keep it even. And it is, it's the same as a, I always go up one needle size when I have a garment that's mixed with a color work. There's the back just so you, in case you wanna see it. Um, so uh, I had a totally different gauge than the pattern, but I liked that gauge. And I'm knitting a cardigan, flat, and the pattern's written for in the round. So what I did is I pulled out my tin can knits. Oh shoot, what do they call it? They have a, it's a recipe for a yoke sweater. And I think they call it something with soup. Oh, how can I not remember that? I'm sorry, I will put it down here. It's a great, great tool and they give you a recipe for making a yoke sweater, wedge style or otherwise. They help you calculate where your increases need to be. Um, they do everything, all the math for you. You just plug in the numbers. And um, one of the things they give you is a, a gauge sheet. So if you don't get the gauge that they wrote their, their recipe for, you find your gauge and then it tells you um, if you want this size sweater, knit with, uh, according to the recipe, knit for this size, based on whatever gauge. So they, 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 they give it to you for multiple gauges. And it's uh, what I'm gonna go by for the math. Plus she has, the Ragna sweater has a waist shaping in, and because it's a cardigan, I don't think I'm gonna do the waist shaping. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is I might not have enough yarn for the body. So I was thinking I might order one more skein of that color just to be safe. Um, so that will be on the needles shortly. What else did I want to show you? I think my socks, right? I have a pair of socks that I'm going to cast on um, as soon as I'm done with the socks for my manager. And they are called the Reason Socks, and they're by Becky Sorensen. Oh, and they're also like the Root Socks I showed you earlier. They're from the Socks 2018, and the magazine is uh, Making Stories. Great stuff. Um, so let me show you. I haven't cast on I haven't even skeined up the wool, but I have it already in a bag in my fat squirrel bag. Show you the picture. I printed it out at work, so if you're thinking I can afford ink like this, I I I can't. Here is a picture of it. I 
like these a lot. I'm going to knit them in um, Spiritual Fiberworks Sunna, which is one of my favorite sock yarns. And I have this color called Eco or Echo. And I'm not sure if you're seeing it well, but it's a, like a speckled blues and purples with a little bit of yellowish green. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to knit it in. But I did order some of her sale yarn, which I should get soon. And I might knit it in one of those colors if I like it better, but I'm not sure. So what else do I have here? I think that's it. Yes. Okay. So that being said, I think I'll just end by telling you that I... I take the, um, uh, talking a little bit about the March Mayhem, if you don't do it, I find it really fun to do it. I actually discovered designers and patterns that I love that I hadn't known of before. Some of the choices they gave though, I thought were kind of ridiculous. And I was like, why did they pick this? And some I felt weren't even patterns. They were just like st stitch, pat stitch, stitches on a, on a, rectangle or something. I, I don't know. Sometimes the stuff people try and sell as a pattern, I'm like, that's what? That's not really a pattern. You're making a rectangle, you're inserting a stitch pattern, and you're charging me five dollars? Why? I know. Maybe I sound a little snobbish, but sometimes, I don't know. It's one thing if you're giving it away or you're just saying, well, here's what I did. <laughs> but I don't know. So some of their stuff, I didn't understand why it made the list, but most of it, it was just beautiful stuff. And I literally looked at each pattern and the sizes it was graded for. If I, if I was familiar with the designer, you know, how a pattern is presented and written makes a lot of difference to me. And while I wasn't going to buy all the patterns and, and um, just so I could see how the patterns were written. Uh, I wish I could so that I could weigh that in. But uh, I did my voting based on that and I just, uh, that's how I discovered that yoke sweater, the Ranga sweater that I'm gonna cast on too. And uh, I really think you should go and do it. I was, I'm thinking about, I haven't decided, recording a little mini recording for each of the categories to go over all the um, entries to give my opinions on why they should or shouldn't win and maybe you'll find that interesting so maybe I'll do it I don't know I took I even wrote it down in my notebook all sorts of notes and I scored them I know a little anal but what can I say I, I enjoyed it I enjoyed the process um, what else um, have you been seeing all the stuff on Instagram with the Edinburgh Yarn Festival? It makes me want to go there so bad. Oh, one year, I would really love to experience that. It seemed to be very different from the Rhinebeck experience. Uh, for one thing, it, I think it was in, indoors, which makes it um, different. and. I noticed there was a huge party which seemed so fun and they were playing the the local you know music and oh it made me wish I was there but it was really wonderful the way all of the people shared videos and tried really hard to make us feel like we were a part of it even though we couldn't be there so I would um, check out the hashtag EYF 2018 is the one I was following. Um, there's so many great photos, not just of great yarns and stash, but of people celebrating each other and ha living joyously. It was really, really wonderful to see. So I did enjoy that. And uh, now I am going to climb out of this little pit. <laughs> And my husband's taking a nap in the car. He actually gave me his hat because I was thinking how cold it would be, but I found this spot that wasn't too windy. But let me, I, I 
stole the hat from him. This is the um, Olympic hat that I knit. That was originally going to be for my co-worker and it was too big on him so I knit him a new one in a smaller gauge with a smaller needle and I gave this to my husband and it's all stretched out. It, it's actually, it doesn't, you can't tell by looking but it's pretty big on my head. But it's, it's a little cold, it's like 40 degrees. Oh, and I didn't tell you about what I'm wearing. This is my sweater that I designed um, out of Harrisburg Turbo turbine, oh, what's it? Uh, um, their bulky weight yarn, which I, is an excellent yarn. Let me stand up and show you if I can without breaking my neck. Oh yeah. So yeah, I designed this myself with the help of Shirley Palin. And it's so nice and warm and comfy and I love it. Um, and with that, I will say goodbye. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. There's my little campsite. You can see all the overgrown bush right here. Um, I was sitting on the rock there. <laughs> it's my basket of stuff. I wanted to show you the beach. This is how close I was to the water. Um, you see all the the white down there, I don't know if you could tell, but those are oyster shells. And they're all over the place here, especially on this in this park, because this was um, centuries ago inhabited by Native Americans, and their main staple was oysters. And what they did was they would dump the shells down by the river. And in some places, not particularly here, but you, if you look at the edge of the shore, you could see them in, inside, in layers, in the dirt, um, buried deep from ages ago. And another thing you find here are these little pieces of brick. If you see, there's one there, right there. Right, these are, because they were uh, all along the Hudson, including in Verplank, where I live, were brick makers. <laughs> and um, they were always near the water, because you could get your materials easily. And bricks ended up in the river, and they washed ashore. And they're just literally very abundant along the shore. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful here. Let me show you. Beautiful Hudson. Love it. Okay, so I found like a good example of the shells. You can see how they're in the dirt. This is was part of a root, I think. And See how the shells got buried in the dirt. And you can see this is like a corroded area of the shore. Let me see if I can get that a little curious here. Hello. But you can see, oh, there's not many over there, but there's a lot over here of those shells. And I don't know, I just think it's really cool that ages ago, the Native Americans were living here, and this were left from them. Beautiful shoreline here. You can see over there, that's all, all white, that's all shells broken up. Uh, they're very specific to George's Island, because this was the area where they lived. I know there were Indians that lived in Verplank's Point years ago, but I don't see any oyster shells from them. So, Hudson River is an estuary, meaning uh, water comes in from the ocean and it has tides. So they did get a lot of salt water uh, life, like oysters and fish and whatnot, to, to eat. So, yeah. <laughs>